at endothermic reactions, but the first thing is we're going to look at an exothermic reaction where the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. And the difference between the two is the energy given out. And so heat is evolved in an exothermic reaction. And so examples in everyday life, uh, fuels burning. For an endothermic reaction, the products have higher energy than the reactants, so the energy has to be taken in in order for the reaction to take place. Examples in everyday life are photosynthesis, uh, cracking hydrocarbons and thermochemical uh, decomposition. And so we're going to look more closely at the endothermic energy level diagram and the energy that needs to be taken in is again a heat of reaction uh, it's called an enthalpy and given the symbols delta H and for an endothermic reaction delta H is positive so that is the heat of the reaction we can also look at it in this form where again reactants have lower energy than the products and here we are showing the activated complex, the intermediate, that uh, needs to be formed before the products are formed. And going from the activated complex to the energy of the reactants, that is the activation energy that is needed to start the reaction. And you can compare it to the enthalpy uh, the shorter arrowed line, uh, which is the energy that needs to be taken in for the whole reaction. But to start it, you need more energy. And this is without a catalyst. And if we put a catalyst in, it lowers the activation energy. Uh, a different intermediate formed with a lower energy. So the reaction will take place more easily. The same uh, enthalpy, the same heat of reaction, is involved uh, with or without a catalyst. But with a catalyst, it just takes place a little more easily. And here are some examples. You can just pause and look through uh, each of those and see if you can think of other examples of a similar uh, track. Um, so what else might you cook, what else might you dissolve, etc. And then we're going to look into the chemistry of them um, and read these equations and see what is actually forming in each. A hydrated salt, uh, forming the anhydrous salt, a reaction between barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, a thermal decomposition decomposition here, copper carbonate, and then cracking hydrocarbons, and uh, you're making smaller hydrocarbons. Uh, here I've just got one, and then an alkene with a double bond, uh, but you might get several cracked products from each catalytic cracking. And in particular, you're going to look at an endothermic reaction involving barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. And so uh, uh, here is the equation, um, but I want you to be able to write in the physical states of the reactants and the products uh, as you're watching the video. Uh, for the reaction, uh, you need to wear uh, goggles and gloves, uh, barium hydroxide, it's a strong alkali, fully dissociates into ions, it's corrosive, it's toxic. Um, so complete the experiment in a fume hood or well-ventilated area and as with all experiments, dispose of the chemicals correctly and you can see the Flynn disposal link for help with that, not down the drain.
That's it, fairly vigorous stirring. Keep stirring, keep stirring. What's happening to it? So it's not quite a double decomposition. Now, why are you moving backwards? Because there's a smell. There's a smell. What is the smell? Let's do something. Lift. That's it. So lift it a little bit more. Lift. That's it. So lift it a little bit more. Pop it down again. So what had happened to the water? It froze. It froze. Pop it down again. And so, uh, pause the video uh, now if you haven't finished adding the physical states. Um, if you do the experiment, you might smell the ammonia gas, um, but if you're in a well-ventilated area, please, and just waft the gas gently. Uh, don't put your face over it and uh, inhale it. And then pause to write down how you would describe to an absent classmate uh, without using uh, thermometer readings that this the reaction that you have just seen is endothermic. And so if we have to summarize it and um, to help you with the physical states, both reactants are white solids at room temperature and uh, so we'll have an S with each of those. Uh, barium hydroxide is a finer powder and ammonium chloride small crystals not that you can't grind everything up um, and the reactant is stirred well but it goes sticky um, and the water that's produced is a liquid and forms a paste sticky paste with with the products so here it is with the physical states pause to check uh, your result and uh, here's the setup of the experiment uh, the equipment that you will need and the chemicals uh, are listed there and uh, using about 30 grams of barium hydroxide 10 grams of ammonium chloride and you put a small amount of distilled water uh, onto a wooden block. Sounds strange for a chemical reaction, but that's what you do. And you've got your reactants uh, in a beaker, uh, and you'll place the beaker on top of the small amount, about a teaspoonful of water, um, underneath the beaker on top of the wooden block. And then stir, so hold the beaker firmly, stir steadily for a few minutes, and note down what happens. Uh, you've seen that in the in the video. And so what has happened? And you're going to lift the beaker and the block is lifted with it because the water has turned to ice. The exothermic reaction has taken in energy from its surroundings and it takes in enough to be able to freeze the small amount of water that is between the beaker and the wooden block. You can also do this experiment just with a thermometer. Take the reading, temperature reading of the powder uh, before stirring, stir for a while and take the temperature uh, afterwards. And how is this going to confirm its an endothermic reaction. Uh, so thank you to Washington International Team Science for making uh, the video.